guys, welcome to Pretty and Plants. So I'm gonna fuzz. Hey Max, I'm filming. Um. so excited and um, if you're new to my channel I do lots of planting things and I'm converting oh I've converted most of my plants Oops. okay so welcome to my channel thank you so much for subscribing for finding me um, I really appreciate all of my subscribers helping you in your semi hydroponic journey so fear not it is not too difficult and I'm gonna start out this year um, my first video of the year I'm gonna do my top 20 it might be more but top 20 easy plants to put in semi hydroponics so so far I've had um, I would say an 85 to 90 percent success rate I have lost a few plants um, but for the most part I've had a really good success rate but some of the plants are definitely easier than others. So let's just dive right in. I'm not doing them in any particular order. Um, converted pretty easily. Well, if you are new to semi-hydroponics, make sure you watch my watering videos and some of my other, other videos. But if you're not new um, or you're kind of in research phase, this is a good video for you because all the plants are super easy. I personally put pothos in a not easy category. And so a lot of people, they're like, ooh, if it's easy in dirt, it'll be easy in semi-hydroponics. But I personally haven't had that experience. Some of my easier plants um, in dirt have not been as easy in semi-hydro. So let's get started. Um, number one, the prayer plant, the marantus or whatever, um, that plant was super easy. I just kind of got their dirt off, put it in semi-hydroponics. It um, right away just took, there was no like lag. Like sometimes your plants are gonna get wilty looking. The prior plant took right off. The Monstera Deliciosa, same thing. Um, I had no like big problems with it. Um, make sure when you first convert your plants, not to give them nutrients in the first three to four weeks. Just let your first watering be a regular watering. Um, and again, I have more videos on that. Philodendron Emerald Green, number three. That plant was super easy, super happy right off the bat. And um, so philodendrons for the most part are, some of them will take a little dip and, and they'll be a little sad for a second and then take off. But for the most part, philodendrons for me have been really amazing in semi-hydroponics. They get lots of new leaves very quickly. They grow very quickly, but I'm gonna name the specifics philodendrons just in case because I have heard, I have been DM'd by a few of you a couple of philodendrons that I didn't have that you didn't feel like were easy conversions. So I'm gonna name when I come to philodendrons, it'll be specific. Um, Sansevierias, um, those have been really easy. Think about it, the aeration, the oxygen, getting through those pebbles to that plant's roots. And some of these plants that I'm naming, they really don't like dirt that much. You're having to find lots of different ways in dirt to aerate the roots, to give them more oxygen, to um, to help them be like happier in dirt because they don't love dirt um, using cocoa coir and all these different things. So it makes sense to me that Sansevieria would do very well in semi-hydroponics. Same thing with the ZZ plant, um, the regular ZZ and my ZZ Raven. Both of those have done phenomenal in semi-hydroponics. Um, the cool thing about it is some of these plants, you don't want to water very much. Um, a lot of these semi-hydroponic um, pictures on Instagram, they're really exciting. Um, you're seeing a lots of water. With these plants, I call them dry root plants, Sansevieria, ZZ plant. Um, those, uh, aloe vera is a really easy plant. Let me try to go in order here though. They are dry root plants and so you can 
uh, wash off all the dirt, get them wet, let them, let them get a good drink of water at your sink, put them in some dry LECA, let them be dry a week, two weeks. Then you can take a mister and just mist the top of the LECA and kind of let the mist go through those pebbles and just take your time in getting it used to being in LECA. This is my rattlesnake calathea, which is, um, this is my rattlesnake calathea. That's my second one. Um, I have two of them. Now this plant has not done as well for um, <coughs> my friend Small. Um, she changed her channel name. I think it's uh, Semi Hydroponics with Small. For some reason, hers has not done as well. Now, I'm not a huge Calathea person because I don't do humidifiers. However, I mist my Calathea. I do mist, and misting is enough for the Rattlesnake Calathea, and it's got tons of new leaves, loves semi hydroponics, roots growing down in the pebbles, the whole thing. Um, number seven, the Parlor Palm. I kind of bought this as a joke and just as a filler plant and it's really taken off and looks really cute. And I'll put my picture up um, of my parlor palm. Has done great from the very beginning, never had issue. The Hoya Crimson Princess. I don't know if I said that in the right order. Really loves semi-hydroponics. Um, and you can, again, that's kind of a dry root plant. It'll kind of fuss a little at the beginning you don't want to overwater them. You can rot the roots. Um, but again, just kind of get it down in those rocks, the pebbles. The hardest thing about some of the Hoyas is their root systems are really small. So when you first, you're just kind of putting them down in the pebbles. You're trying to keep them down in there. And then you're just going to miss the top for the first month or so. But pretty quickly, mine perked up and we're ready for water. Drin emerald red. I don't know what that one is, but it's loved it from the very beginning. Um, it's one of the first plants I converted and just took off a medium. The philodendron prince of orange. Again, it was one that I got a very small one of it and converted it. It just has gotten new leaves and converted very easily. Um, the carnosa compacta, the Hoya carnosa compacta actually has done really well. Um, I have a variegated one and a regular one. The regular one has grown really long in the um, LECA. The Hoya Crimson Queen has done well. Now, it hasn't taken off quite yet, like my, um, and I think that has to do with the size of the roots. The Dendron Mayoi. Um, now, that one I got, it was a mail order and it was kind of sad at the beginning. And so I babied it and I have another video on that. But once it took off, when I put it in LECA, it really took off, loves it. Um, my starfish Sansevieria, again, another Sansevieria um, that just loves it. It's gotten several new babies and new growth. My Monstera Stanleyana, that's a brand new plant for me and I immediately, when I got it, took it out of its dirt, put it in semi-hydro, and in 10 days, it had three inch new roots. Um, amazing. The bird's nest fern loves it, has never had an issue. Um, some of the, like the bird's nest fern and some of the ones with those little tiny fine roots, um, there to me, that actually should maybe not be in the easy category. I feel like fine roots can um, can be difficult to deal with, difficult to get the dirt off of. But sometimes what I'll do if it's a fine rooted plant is I'll just get as much dirt off as I can and just go ahead and put it into the pebbles, allow the dirt to kind of be part of what stabilizes a little bit, cover it with pebbles, and then be very gentle with watering and everything until it takes off. Now you'll know when your plant is taking off, it, you'll start getting new root shoots of leaves and um, my, uh, the fern, the bird's nest fern actually got bigger leaves. Um, and the ponytail palm, amazing. So what's really shocked me and the semi-hydroponics, 
are things like aloe vera, ponytail palm, succulents, cactus, like you would think that those, um, my ponytail palm is a good example. I've always heard, you know, water once a month and um, in dirt, like barely water it. You can ignore it. Um, my ponytail palm has grown about seven inches in about three months and it licks up the water almost every week. It really, really likes the water. So not all of the rules in dirt are going to apply once you put in semi-hydroponics. That is why I recommend, highly recommend, that you really take your time with your plants and not convert 50 plants at once, but convert a couple of plants, watch them, like abstain from watering them, and kind of get your footing. Um, my last video I talked about converting one plant a month. I've really slowed down on purchasing, not because it's winter, because we're in Texas, I can go buy plants really year round. It was 70 degrees Fahrenheit today. It's January the 5th or 6th. So um, I can buy more plants and I have room for more plants, but what's stopping me is I know it just takes time once you've put it in like a, if I take my time on a plant, it seems like I enjoy the process more and the plant enjoys the process more. So uh, I did that with the ponytail palm and I've really enjoyed it because it's really, but I have kept a really good eye on it. Um, Philodendron jungle boogie. I love this plant. It has never complained about the semi-hydroponics, it was a giant plant when I bought it. It was probably a $50 plant because it was real big and huge and fluffy and literally zero problems, zero. Like I think I flushed it or soaked it one time maybe. It absorbs all the nutrients, it loves the water, it gets new leaves almost every three days. That thing is amazing and fluffy. If you can get your hands on a philodendron jungle boogie, do. I absolutely love the leaf shape and the color. It's just a very happy, fun plant. Um, the philodendron green congo is another one. There's red congo and green congo. Both of those do amazing in semi-hydroponics. Now, there are gonna be some plants that I did not mention because I've had problems with them. The pothos does amazing and semi-hydroponics if it lives. The, um, and I've had several, I've had several work. Uh, maybe I'll put a card above for my pothos video. I actually have killed five, I think. Then I've had others that were cuttings and I put them in water and then I transferred them to LECA and they were just like, this is the best life ever. Um, so that's my pothos. The Monstera adansonii. I've had an issue with that one and I've seen really cool pictures on the Instagram with huge roots and loving the semi-hydroponics. I talked to a man at the nursery and he said they really like to dry out between and it was one of my very first plants I got and I think I've just been not, I haven't been letting it dry out enough between. I love alocasias and I've converted several, but I feel like they're pretty sensitive and can rot really easily. And so I didn't put that on the list. And thuriums, I love anthuriums and I have several in Sydney hydroponics. But again, like let it, like the dry cycle, letting it dry out really, really well. I feel like anthuriums can be really sensitive to watering. And even after they converted, I have two beautiful um, Ethereums, the Flamingo. They're in um, semi-hydro and have been for months and have been loving it. But the second I do a little too much water, the leaves will start browning. Um, they kind of tell me. And so some of the plants that for me have just been super easy. Now, I think the other thing like with Pothos is not to be like overly confident when you switch your plants to semi-hydroponics. If you're too confident and you're just throwing them in there and like, oh, I know you love water and here's three inches of water, 
that's where you run into trouble. If you're very like delicate with your plants and loving and gentle and um, you're very just cautious about watering because over watering, whether it's dirt or semi hydro hydroponics is the number one cause of death. If you feel like you're helicoptering a little bit, put the plant up on a shelf and put a reminder on your iCal to check it in seven days or four days. Don't helicopter mom because that's the way I've killed a couple of things or at least things I haven't killed I've put in distress and then I've had to pull them out of stress. And I'm trying to eliminate that. I'm trying to get it to the point where none of my plants are in stress. At the very beginning, the first four weeks, I do a lot of steam. I have a steam shower. Uh, my bathroom, we use the shower constantly. We have five children, they like to use our shower. So I will actually put plants in the shower for the first three or four weeks, um, which has helped me get a really solid conversion. Um, is lots of steam at the beginning. And then once they're established and rooted, I'm, my just misting once a day and putting them where I want them has seemed to work really well. So I hope this helped y'all. Oh, another plant that is not easy is ficus. Um, they will convert, but they require very light uh, watering and just a lot of attention for four months. So your ficus, your ficus lorata, if it's a little tiny one from Lowe's or something, have fun. But mine is a really, really, I have big trees on the ficus category, big rubber plants, the taniki. Those rubber plants, uh, ficus, um, do pr really well, actually. Um, same thing though, I feel like all of the ficus, the roots are very prone to rotting easily. And so if you're not pretty, accurate with your watering you can rot it out in one watering and it doesn't give you there's not much leeway there so i hope this video helped y'all i'm so excited for this new year and um i'll probably talk a little bit more about new year's goals on the next show but i wanted to get this top 20 easy semi hydroponics plant video out first and can't wait to see y'all next time love you bye bye